Okay, tour of my patio planters, a little bit about the pool and the pool cover. Louise Python shows up all over the place and how a vibrator can improve your tomato plants. Okay, here's the view of the patio from the dining room, looking out on my tomatoes and marigolds over there. <clears throat> we'll go outside in a second. Inside the dining room is a gazillion seed pods. Uh, they're peat and coconut husk. And over there is my favorite little planter of a teacup. It's about a foot across with little uh, tiny plants in it. It's really cute. So I got Louise out of bed and took her outside, put her in the pool. There is a pool cover on that thing, and it is basically heavy-duty bubble wrap uh, sewn into a giant circular sheet. It's perfect. It floats on the top. You just tuck it around the edge of the pool, and it keeps the leaves out. It's got little holes in it to keep the so that rain doesn't pile up on top, and it keeps the water really, really warm. Okay, here's my tomato planter. It is about four and a half feet tall to the top of that thing. It's one tomato cage with about four tomato plants all sharing the space. I had to do a little bit of pruning to get them to all fit. Today I see two tomatoes that are ready to go. So we'll take those off. Is that my hair? I've so got to dye my hair. Ugh. Okay. And uh, pollinating tomatoes, they don't, what you do is you just shake the whole cage very, very gently. And in fact, if you've got an electric toothbrush or an old vibrator, that's perfect. Just touch it to the wire cage so it vibrates for a few seconds and that is enough to pollinate uh, the tomato. And, and next door to it in the planter is a rose bush. It's surrounded by basil and a lot of marigold. Checking back on Louise, she is still lying on top of the pool cover. It, Although it's just bubble wrap, uh, thanks to surface tension, it will actually accommodate about half her weight before it begins to sink. And she likes hanging out over there. Uh, and she's not going in the water, and I am detecting that she's probably about to piddle. Let's check the tail end. Yep, there's a, there's a lump of calcium. Her tail's up in the air, and she's piddling. And there she's moving away from it. So she's, I'm going to get her out of the pool. Let's pull the cover back. See, it just, it, you just let it float and then you, you just pull it and tuck it underneath the sides and that keeps the water warm. Okay, the planters. This one is going to go around the corner and a bunch of melons are going to be moved into it. So right now it is a bunch of milkweed and a whole lot of marigold because melons need marigold and some basil that will be moved. And these are all coneflower, purple coneflower, mixed color coneflowers and some Shasta daisy seeds. The patio. Lots of zinnias, lots of uh, petunias. And they're all in one big, happy, sprawling planter. All these planters are the same. Uh, they're all brown. I covered them all in different color duct tape, and so I could see them by the different duct tape. That's a mandazia. Manda, I don't forget. I can look it up if you really want to know. There's my butterfly bush. It's a tall one. That's me in the reflection. You can see this guy is a foot taller than I am. That is tapioca, and it's got really gnarly fractally kind of leaves and there's a bunch of basil and that should be sweet pea and for about the last week the sweet peas have had no sun whatsoever sweet peas aren't getting any sun right now uh june 21st the sun moved and they get no sunlight all day uh in another week the sun will start ooching back this way and they'll be back in full sunlight and that's a really nice birdhouse that never gets any birds so it gets a lot of visitors Okay, my planters. I love these things. They're on little wheels, and even if you're a uh, uh, fairly sickly, bed-bound person like me, when you can get up, you can sit on the ground like this, and you can uh, wheel these planters around and, and check on them. Uh, in one corner, there's a pipe I'm pointing at, and that whole base there holds about four gallons of water, so you can fill them with water once a week, and they should take care of themselves if they've got roots deep deep enough, but I could sit on the ground like this and clean up my marigolds and pull off the seed heads that are ready to be taken indoors and, and sown in new pots. I can check this rose for bugs. Once a week I get the hose, I sit on the ground and I point the hose straight up and blast the underside of these leaves and that takes care of the bugs. A few leaves are eaten away here and there. The rose doesn't, a few leaves has got a 
bug the rose. I don't want to get into spraying it and insecticides and all that nasty shit. A few rose leaves doesn't matter. And I'm picking some flowers off my basil here. And, um, yeah, these planters are about 30 bucks at Home Depot and Lowe's. They don't have them anymore, I guess. They sold out. They've got them on Amazon, and they cost a fortune, so don't get them there. Hydrangea flowers, you can cut them off and put them in a vase and they will last about a week. But there is a trick to it. Cut it off, give it about 8 inches of stem, remove the leaves, cut the stem open. And when you cut the stem, take a little vase outside with you full of cold water and dump the flower in it immediately. Then bring it indoors. Heat up some water on the stove or in, a, in the microwave so that it's near boiling. Take the stem out of the cold water, put it in the hot for about 30 seconds. It will melt, melt some kind of wax that forms on the stem to keep it alive. Uh, sit it in the hot water for 30 seconds and then put it back in the vase of cold water and it will last about a week. If it starts to wilt, uh, cut off some more of the stem, split the stem open a little bit, dunk it back in hot water, dunk it back in cold water and the wilting flower should perk right back up. How about that? Learn something. And Louise is aiming to be a master gardener one day. Okay, Louise, let's get inside. <laughs>